Replaceable coil type pod system was introduced by eLeaf with their eye care solo in 2017. A fantastic device, one of my favorites. Since then, we have seen numerous others, but none have attempted a rebuildable one until this. Hey folks, Corax here. And yes, my friends, you can set up your own coil and wick in this new pod system. The first of its kind, the gesture by Vapefly. There are currently two such rebuildable port systems in the market. This and the Spoanth Pasito. Though the Pasito got released earlier, this one indeed was the first. It was introduced about 2-3 months before, unfortunately got released a bit later. And now that it is finally in the market, let me assure you that this indeed is an awesome vape. See that? I feel it. There are some pretty good things going on here. Let's check them up close. Received through China Post, ePacket Express. Shenzhen to Toronto in 7 days. Usual cardboard packaging, neatly done, but nothing out of the moon. Comes in multiple colors, graphics. I have the skull model. Slip on cover over the actual box. But what's inside is what matters, doesn't it? Neat internals. Everything sits well secured in their own cutouts. Nicely done. Yes, we receive the device with one pod attached. And a spare but different pod as well. We will come to these shortly. We also receive some other goodies. A bag of consumables, organic cotton and two coils. These are 28 AWG canthal, 2 mm diameter, 1 ohms. A bag of spares containing some spare screws, o-rings, gaskets, fill plugs, pull tabs and a T-type screwdriver. That's quite a collection, isn't it? There is a micro USB charging cord included as well. Good that it is sufficiently long, unlike few others who pack a short, nearly useless cable. And then there is this big ass newspaper. <laughs> the instructions pamphlet. By the way, don't worry, the only content of concern is this tiny section. It is the same thing repeated over and over in multiple languages. This is basically a quick start guide, which seems to be well written. Now on to the main device. This is a short and stout pod system. Looks good by the way. Essentially an all black product with different sleeves mounted to make different versions. The color variations are just the sleeves which are matte finished and has a rubberized feel 
just like the old Ego batteries. It will not attract fingerprints. I like that. You can feel the sleeve edges, but they are heat glued, won't peel off easily. In any case, these are very well done. No imperfections anywhere at all. The buttons and the pods are shiny plastic though, but the contrast actually makes it look classy. Duckbill mouthpiece end, semi whiteboard outlet, and like most pods, it is a bloody lint magnet. The firing button is so very slightly protruding and is curved matching the contours of the body. And since you can feel it, there is no hassle at locating it. There are two release buttons on the sides. Totally three buttons. These two are the pod locks and they protrude enough to easily find them. Nice solid latching mechanism here. Two hooks in the connector socket and two slots for them on the pod. Spring loaded male contacts, three prongs, two negatives to contact with any portion of the coil circumference and one positive for the center pin. I like that. All are gold plated by the way. The entire unit is made of plastic but of solid material. Very well fit and finish. And it feels heavy as well. The device with empty pod attached weighs 56 grams. Here it is with a filled pod, the RBA one. And now the gesture weighs 58 and half grams. It sure is a substantial unit. Size wise, it is around 9 cm by 3.3 cm head to toe. With nearly 2 cm in width. But you don't feel the width because it is a curved device. Narrower at the ends with a bulging girth. There is a 1000 mAh battery inside. Yes, you heard it correct. 1000 mAh. Wow. This should last us a day. Charging port at the bottom. Micro USB. The firing button lights up red while charging and switches off when fully charged. It is also a pass through device. Great. You can vape with it while it is charging. Standard 5 clicks on and off and while on, every time you reattach the pod, the red light blinks once. It also has a regulator chip inside. We thus have three power options to vape with. Purple, blue and green. Purple for 3.3 volts, blue for 3.8 and green for 4.8 volts. Three clicks get you to the power selections. And finally, we also have an indication for when it is time to charge the device. If the battery voltage drops below 3.2 volts, the LED flashes red 10 times and the gesture shuts down. Now let's check the pods. It comes with the RBA pod attached. and the stock coil one as a spare. Remember, this is for the two-in-one package. You can purchase the gesture with just the mesh coil model as well for just a few dollars less. The stock coil pod has a safety sticker so that it doesn't accidentally fire up while in transit. Notice the spring. 
This is the latch for the top cap. The button releases it. A spring loaded cap it is. And this rubber piece is the fill port cover. Pull it off to fill the tank. 2 ml capacity here my friends. Press fit it back once done. Remember to peel off the sticker before use. You know that. And you have an AFC ring to play with. Wow. Grooves cut all around for easy grabbing. Two way slot, 1 mm by 7 mm each. Nail on the AFC slot to pull the coil out. Tip Notice that the coil body has two parallel cuts. The same is there on the pod inlet. We need to match the cuts of both while inserting. Else they will not marry up well, leaving a protruding coil and you might not be able to attach the pod properly. By the way, nice chimney bore here, not too wide and not too tight. It is a perfect 4mm wide vapor channel. This is one more thing I am liking about it. Onto the stock coil. Oh yes, the AFC has a stopper at both ends. I love that. This is a 0.5 ohm coil, super sub ohm. And they suggest firing it between 15 to 21 watts. By the way, remember the three wattages, purple, blue and green? The green LED gives you 4.8 volts and that is not available for anything lower than 0.5 ohms. This coil can be fired at green but better avoided. That's a whopping 46 watts drawing over 9.5 amps. It will be a very warm vape and obviously will deplete the battery way faster. Your call. This one is a vertical mesh coil with speed back protection. But they also have a 1.2 ohms regular canthal coil version. I think that will come as a spare in the meshed edition. And now the star of the show, the RBA pod. No spring loaded cap here, just a press fit. Same plastic top cap but with a nice short chamber, dome shaped, tapered at the outlet for smooth vapor output. The chamber height is roughly 5 or 6 mm, while the width is around 11 mm. So yes, this is a compact chamber. It will offer a nice condensed vape, also slightly warm. And here is the deck. Oh yes, the smart K5 styled. Two posts for single coil with brackets. I love this deck system. Just place the coil with its legs through the brackets and tighten the screw. No need to wrap the coil legs. For larger wise size, for example the fancy coils, wrap the wire outside the brackets. The post screws will still tighten it up. However, this being a pod system, we might do good using simple plain chain wires only. This bottom section is the tank by the way, RDTA design remember? One thing though, there is no AFC ring in this RBA pod unit, unlike the stock coil version. So here we are relegated to the same draw forever, whether we like it or not, no adjustments possible. Air flow is under the coil, nice that the air channel is also lifted, it helps two folds. One, air inlet gets closer to the coil and two, avoids leaking if the deck gets flooded. Air intake is from the bottom, comes from the connector socket and enters the pod through these two slots, one on either side, like so and into the deck. Overall, the deck real estate seems to be rebuild friendly. 
Post to post, we are looking at approximately 8 mm space. Great. End to end, about 14 mm. Good enough for rebuilding work. In fact, it is similar to most full-fledged RTAs. Nice. Remember, the chamber was 11 mm wide. So it will sit inside the deck walls when attached. Gold plated post pin. And this is the rubber grommet for fill port. Nice that there is an extended pull tab as well. Single fill port, but there is an air escape hole as well, right inside the deck well. Good call there, because if the air escape pushes out some e-liquid, it will remain within the chamber and the wicks would soak it in. No unnecessary mess here. Reinserting the grommet is also very easy, thanks the pull tab. And remember, we also have a few extra ones in the spares baggy. Though the pods come neat and clean, without any machine oil, gunk or residue, it is always wise to give a thorough initial clean before using them. It is the same with any addy. I also loop the o-rings, but since there are none here, we can go straight into rebuilding it. Two coils are already provided in the package, along with some organic cotton. These are 2 mm canthal coils, wound for 1 ohm resistance. The post screws are standard sized, little thinner than a few RTS, but exactly like the new KFN light ones. So I believe they are likewise, M1.6 by 4. It is wise to mount the coil head facing up, that is, the wire legs are extending from the bottom. As I said, there is no need to wrap the coil legs around the post screws. Just pass them through the brackets and holding the wire end down, tighten the screws up. Then bend the legs into the bracket hooks. This inward bend helps against the wires touching the chamber walls and shorting if the trimming was not perfect. If you mount the coil like I did, the air gap between the coil and the base's air channel automatically remains at 1.5 mm plus minus, which is the sweet spot for most RBS, including this. Now test fire it. Caution, pulsing only. Don't apply long bursts of voltage to the new coil you may unnecessarily pop it. All good, now let's wick it. This seems to be cotton bacon, exactly like these. Yes, I am correct, same thing. Let's put them to good use. Peel off a suitable strand of supplied cotton Remember, it is a 2 mm inner diameter coil. Then roll it. I always do. Rolling helps with juice feed. Converts the cotton into a wick. There is a difference between the two. Keep the ends enough to go at least halfway through the tank. Oh, if you have not already understood, this is a RDTA style system. The tank is under the coil and the wick needs to pull up liquid. I will keep the wick tails a little bit over and beyond the periphery of the pot body, approximately 1.3-1.4 cm long. Then tuck them down into the tank through the two wick slots. Just ensure that the wick softly engulfs the whole slot. We don't want juice to flow out if the device gets upside down, do we? And that's one of the evils of a RDTA Addy. Now let's test it again. Using my own DIY e-liquid, it is a free base 50-50 mix at 6 mg. And yes, you don't necessarily need to use nick salts in your pot systems. Just up the nick strength. I generally vape 3 mg e-juice, 
but with pots I simply double it up. There we go. Now let's fill the tank. Did I mention I love this pull tab? Remember the escape hole is inside the deck. Now here is one major con with this pod. The tank section is so tinted that it is nearly impossible to observe our e-liquid levels. Even with lights on facing the pod, it still remains an issue. I wish Wavefly addresses this in their next production run. All good till now, top cap on and time for the moment of truth. The Jester by Vapefly Yes folks, this is some good vape indeed. It is slightly loose mouth to lung, more of a restricted lung hitter like I prefer. And new vapors might need getting used to it. But for a little matured ones, this is a perfect vape. Here are my final thoughts. As a pro, there are some pretty nice things, like I said, going on with the gesture. Rebuildable pods are absolutely the way to go. Opens up a whole world of opportunities. Set it up the way you like it. And of course, they are very pocket friendly. All in one form factor, best devices for on the go. Then this gesture is also so simple to set up. Good deck real estate, KFN 5 type posts, coiling and wicking is merely a 2 minutes job. You saw that. Secondly, though all plastic, this gesture is actually very well made. Rock solid construction, strong body material and everything fits nice and snug. Even the mouthpiece section sits and snaps tight. The rubberized sleeve feels very welcoming in hand and avoids fingerprints. Nice clicky firing button, child lock cartridge release, gold plated contacts with spring loaded male ends. This truly is a very well done job in my opinion. Thirdly, the device is also very compact, short and sleek. Though stout, has some girth, yet pretty good looking in hand. And perfectly fine to carry around, no issues there at all. Fourthly, it also comes in multiple variations. Though all essentially are black except the silver model, it is the heat treated sleeves that distinguish one from the other. Nonetheless, there is something for everyone. And if you do not like this graffiti, there are three plain ones as well. Two in black and one in silver. Fifthly, I am not so affable to duck bill mouthpieces. But the gesture one is actually quite comfortable to use. There is a soft curvature at the drawing end, which reduces the width. And our lips sit nicely within the indent. The posture and intake is actually well designed here. I am absolutely liking it. Sixthly, the vape quality out of this little system is excellent. Of course, it will depend upon the way you build it. But keep it at 28 gauge AWG plus minus 0 0.8 to 1.2 ohm coils, 50-50 mix and you will get some top quality flavor out of it akin to top quality RTS. I'm actually surprised at what a great vape experience I'm getting out of this pod system. This is a very good vape my friends. Seventhly, you can also customize your power requirement with the gesture. There are three voltages to select from. Purple LED for 3.3 volts, blue for 3.8 and green for 4.8 volts. Of course, the 4.8 volt is not available for anything under 
0.5 ohms. But that's our protection against accidentally burning our wick. I am typically keeping it at its lowest setting. Purple 3.3 volts with a 1 ohm coil and the vape quality is amazing. Perfect for me. And not to forget, this is also a 1000 mAh battery. With a 1 ohm coil plus minus, you can easily get a day out of it. I have been carrying it to work and sans one midway port refill, the battery lasts me well past my return to home. This is an excellent battery life to device size in my opinion. And oh, by the way, this is also a fast charging device. I use my BlackBerry 2 amps charger and from zero to full, the gesture does it in about 20-25 minutes. I haven't had any device charging so fast earlier. Moreover, it is also pass-through capable. So even if you are charging the gesture, you can always vape it while being connected. Now, 2 ml pods don't seem that much in today's world, do they? But in my opinion, given that these are starter kits and we are likely to vape 1 ohm and above, the gesture pod easily lasts me a whole half working day. Like I said earlier, I refill it once midway through and I am good till the evening. In any case, this is still higher capacity than many others in the market. Another nice thing about the gesture is that Vapefly, the makers, didn't skimp on its package content. You receive everything for the money you spend. Two pods, one OEM coiled and one rebuildable. Enough spares, consumables to get you started, a standard micro USB charging cord and a quick start guide in multiple languages. By the way, remember to pick the two-in-one edition. For peanuts, it is always wise to grab the rebuildable pod as well, which in my opinion is its forte. There are many pod systems out there, but rebuildable ones? And lastly, all these you get for just $26. How cool is that? I am linking fast tech here because of two reasons. One, it is a very reliable vendor. Two, your shipping is also included in that site. By the way, no, I am not getting benefited or paid by Fastech for this review. It is purely my opinion. You can grab it from anywhere. The Jester by Vapefly So, that is all the good news. Is there any issues with this device? Seriously speaking, none. For its price, I am actually getting more than what I expected. But what's an item without its quirks? Yes, there are a few. As you have understood by now, it is essentially a RDTA, a Genesis style atomizer with cotton wicks. And as with all RDTAs, you cannot keep them sideways. It will leak. You see, if you jam the wick holes, it will have feeding troubles. And if you keep it just snug, the way it will wick well, juice is likely to trickle out of the wick holes. Not to forget, there is also that air escape hole on the deck floor. It is not only about the gesture, it is a necessary, inescapable evil of all RDTAs. Now, the top cap is just press fit. No qualms about it, it sits snugly, but it is plastic over plastic. And since the chimney is also just sitting over the deck, condensation, which is unavoidable, builds up around the chamber, flows into the top cap and sneaks out under, between the pod and the battery joint. If not checked regularly, it will build up near the connectors. Though not a big issue, because the connectors are actually very well protected, but still. Another issue we might have, though not a problem yet, is with this rubberized sleeve. It is a sticker job. Well done though, heat treated, but it might not hold up for long. It is similar to the Vapor Shark RDNA and the erstwhile Ego batteries 
and as you have noticed mine is all worn out it is pretty old though about four or five years old but i'm sure this gesture also will follow suit i hope wavefly releases aftermarket stickers for this body not a big deal again but this pod has a slight play it is due to its spring loaded connectors and i believe the top cap is slightly shorter just a hairline long and this could have been avoided once again no big deal because the cartridge is hold pretty strong it is not going anywhere unless you press the locking buttons and lastly i think the usb port should have been in the side not in the bottom remember i said it has rdta issues it needs to be always kept upside vertically if not it will leak and because the port is in the bottom you have to keep it sideways for charging and that could cause some seepage i have noticed it once or twice a sixth useful thinking would have been the use of usb type c in place of micro usb again it actually is a non issue due to three reasons one it is super fast charging anyway 20 to 25 minutes to full charge what more do we want secondly USB type C is more of data transfer not so much for charging and three what's the point of having USB C on board if your charging brick is not compatible it is not yet popular so most of us have micro USB cables lying everywhere in the home That's about it folks. The bottom line is for the money the Jester offers much more than what is expected. I am overwhelmed by its capabilities. I think it is a fantastic device. In my book I give it 5 out of 5. Yes my friends it is a 5 star pot system. Vapes amazingly well, is extremely simple to set up, looks nice, comfortable to use and is a great value for every cent spent. I would recommend this to anyone in a heartbeat. It is a perfect carry on device and absolutely suitable for new vapors as well. After they get used to slightly loose draws, this is not a tight MTL port system by any means. I hope I have given you enough details about this wonderful port system and you have enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Adios and as always, remember, vaping is a healthier alternative and we have the right to make that.